everybody, this is Mary Shores, and today we are doing a Facebook Live training with Judy Sway. But hey, if you don't know me, or we've never met before, my name is Mary Shores, and I am the Hay House bestselling author of the book, Conscious Communications, your step-by-step -step guide to harnessing the power of your words to change your mind, your choices, and your life. Now, this book hit bestseller on Amazon within six weeks of its release, which was of course very exciting around here and i can teach you these things because i truly believe and it's backed by science that you can change your reality with just your words and you know coming off of this big success with the book i really want to share with authors who have not or you know they haven't uh, published their first book and i want to share with you guys the things that i wish that i would have known judy's a big part of that because she is a a, a strategist and a word stylist who really likes to work with female entrepreneurs to help them tell their story and to be seen. And I just have to tell you that anyone who aspires to be an author, you know, building a brand is one of the most important pieces to that. And so I'm really excited to welcome Judy today. Hello. Hello. Aloha. Thank you for having me here. I'm really excited. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about yourself. So I know that you um, like to work with wild-hearted female entrepreneurs. What would you add to that? Yeah, so my company's name is Wild Hearted Words. And, you know, I even have a tattoo on my wrist. It says wild and free. <laughs> um, and I really like to help every female entrepreneur bring your unique, authentic story to life. So, you know, in an online world, we are so saturated by noise. There's everybody's just scrolling all the time. How do you differentiate when we all have access to the same gorgeous stock photography, or, you know, we're all in saturated markets doing the same kinds of things. And so really stand out, it's your unique story. Because at the end of the day, what you're building is that connection with your tribe. And as an author, and anybody who's aspiring to really stand out with whatever it is that you're doing. So whether you have a business, a service, or you're writing a book, you need to build that platform. Because even though it seems like we need those 100,000, several hundred thousand you know, people following us, actually what you need is a thousand raving fans. So people who are really devoted to you, your message, what you're sharing, and have formed that connection with you so that they'll follow you along in the lifetime of your career. And so I really like to, you know, do a lot of both educating and drawing out your unique story and having it be in your voice and having you shine. And because, you know, I mean, as you know, there's only one of us ever <laughs> on this planet. So I used to teach yoga. So from the beginning of time ever after, there's only ever going to be one of you. So you have a beautiful, unique story. And that's what I love to do. Very good. That's so exciting. I love hearing it. So what do you think or why do you think this training is so important today and who does it matter for? Yeah, um, well, I think that within each of us, we have this purpose and this drive and this desire to express ourselves. I and mean, how satisfying does it feel when you communicate with someone and they really get you? It really feels like you have that sense of belonging, that you're really being seen. And I think that that's what all of us as humans and as souls are craving is that connection. So the reason that this training is so exciting is because then we really get to draw out that connection why we're all here, you know, to enhance, enhance and enrich our experiences. And then it's also to help you gain clarity on your unique story and how to share that with the world. I think that um, in the online world, it's very easy to fall into that trap that, you know, what you see on social media, the highlight reel, is actually what's happening. And so what I like is to bring about you know, more of the subtleties, bring about more of the everyday truths, because really that's what's going to help us connect with one another is that vulnerability. So how can you share that vulnerability without making yourself an open book, without crossing boundaries, without suffering from vulnerability hangover? <laughs> so, you know, those are all things that, that are going to be really exciting for today. Yeah, I love that. I'm always saying that everything you're doing is either creating a deeper connection or driving a driving a disconnection. So that is like perfectly in line with the things that that I am often teaching. So how do we do that? How how do we do what what's our steps? 
Yeah, so you might have some men watching as well. So, you know, you can feel free to change the gender of what I'm saying. I'm just going to use the feminine pronoun. <laughs> so I'm going to say that, you know, each of us has a heroin journey. And um, if you search Joseph Campbell on Google and you search the hero's journey, you'll see that this is the archetype for a lot of stories. So in modern media, um, modern entertainment, you can think of Star Wars, um, you can think of Harry Potter, and it's usually someone who feels called to something greater that you have uh, this purpose that you need to fulfill. But how are you going to fulfill that? And usually when you are this heroine or this hero, it's not this easy, you know, walk in the park, you're going to like sashay by the shore. That's not usually how it goes. It's usually because you're faced with some challenges that you're really asked to reflect inwardly upon who you are and how you want to show up in the world. And then by overcoming these challenges and by going through this journey of yours, then you come back a changed person. And from that changed perspective, you have these lessons and these amazing insights that you can share with other people who might be just a few steps behind you in the journey, who might not even be aware that this is a journey that they want to embark on. And so what I like to say is, you know, reflect upon your own life. So if you are an entrepreneur, for example, you know, why did you start your business? What was the catalyst that brought you to where you are now? And if you are an author um, or an aspiring writer, what's the story that's that's the most captivating for you, that the one that you always end up coming back to when you meet someone for the first time. So a lot of the time when I um, coach my clients, I say, okay, well, imagine that you and I are meeting for coffee and we, we barely know each other, um, but we like each other's energy. So what are you gonna tell me? How are you gonna open up so that we can form that deeper connection? And usually we all have these core stories that we come back to, so things that we identify ourselves with. So it first starts from you know, a deeper understanding of yourself and what's that story that you keep coming back to. So for example, Mary, for you, you know, what's the story that you end up coming back to every time that you meet someone for the first time? Well, uh, you know, recently it's been all about becoming a writer because become because being a writer was a dream that I had had for so many years, and I was keeping myself from that because of these obstacles. You know, I want to say how excited I was when I heard you mention the hero's journey because it's something that I've been exploring more and more in my life, and to help people understand that your gifts are really the things that you're born with and that is your purpose and it's like we go through these steps in life to bring those skills out more and more and i want to ask the audience so for anybody who is uh, watching along um are let us know if you're resonating with this material you know do you feel like you understand where your life fits with this hero's journey especially the way that Judy mentioned going through the trials and tribulations of life. So it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily the triumphs that make you go through the hero's journey. It is the illnesses, the the issues with the children, the divorce, the maybe being abandoned at a young age. It's these things that can really cultivate a powerful strength um, within your within your being. So yeah, let us know if you um, resonate with that. All right, so yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say, like you know, for you with sharing that story about how you felt like within that you always wanted to be a writer and then you have this book within. I mean, so many people can resonate with that because whether or not you actually want to become a writer. There, there's usually a calling that we understand and we're a little bit afraid to pursue it or we're not sure how we're going to even do it. And so immediately I resonate with you because that's, that's just a core element of human condition is just to, you know, have these unknowns and how are we going to move through them. So I really love that, you know, you share that. And it, I always say also, the more specific that you can get, the more powerful your story is going to be. So you can get into those details. It doesn't need to, it doesn't have to be these like, monumental, horrible things that happened. I know that that grasps people's attention and that's like really great. But even just you saying, you know, I wanted to write a book and I didn't know how I was going to do it. I think that so many people watching can resonate with that. There's something that you want to do, but you're not really sure how to do it. So I think about that. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you say that because so often I think, well, you know, I feel like a lot of people that get attention in the media are people that either used to be drug addicts or, you know, like they've got that big addiction that they overcame. And sometimes I feel like, well, I never had an addiction. <laughs> 
So, but you know what? I do like my biggest thing, and especially the thing that I like to tell people is that, you know, I wanted to be a writer for 10 years, but my mantra was, I want to write a book, but I'm not a writer. Well, the thing is that your words are like a mirror to your subconscious programming. So those words, I want to write a book, it's like you can see that written on my soul, like you're talking about this hero's journey. But the words, I'm not a writer, is revealing some sort of belief system that was not in alignment. But it's not even about just being a writer, because how often do people say, I want to start a business, but I don't have enough money, or I want to you know, they, there's all this like foundation of thinking that we're not capable of it. And from what my, the way that I've overcome this, like part of my hero's journey was to understand the importance of investing in myself. Mm -hmm. And like today's conversation with Judy, I mean, these are all examples of the things that, you know, I want to learn them myself, but I also want to bring them to all of you. So how did you learn about this, Judy? What was your aha moment? That's a really good question. So, I mean, I feel like I've been a writer ever since I was in fourth grade. <laughs> I discovered that it was something that I wanted to do. I just didn't even know that that was like a profession that you could pursue. And so, you know, I grew up in a really traditional Chinese environment where you were expected to make a lot of money by becoming a doctor or a lawyer. So I had immigrant parents. And, you know, I think that the immigrant mentality a lot of the times is this feeling of scarcity or fear. And, you know, I We've, my parents and I have talked a lot about this, and, and when I really delve into their story, I realized, like, wow, it's a profound um, experience for them. So when I grew up, I didn't realize that I could pursue a creative endeavor <laughs> as a profession, but my soul kept calling me to that. And so, you know, I, I'm great with strategy, and I, I always say that I work really well with left brain people because I can draw you into the right brain, and I work really well with right brain people because I can draw you into like the logics and the strategy, the logistics and the strategies. But you know, when I realized that the power of my writing, my superpower, I always say that everyone has a superpower. So my superpower is authenticity, and it's being able to express in words the things that you know I'm feeling and that so many other people are feeling in a way that really resonates. So. I have been published a lot, you know, in Mind, Body, Green, and Elephant Journal, and all these things, and I would get emails from readers around the world who I didn't know who said, thank you so much for sharing this, because it was what I was going through, and I had no idea how to say it or express it. And I think that that was so rewarding, that being authentic and sharing my personal narrative, just showing up in that way, enabled this relief for other people, or this connection. And so I always say, you know, like, I've learned through actual testing it out, <laughs> that when you show up authentically, you have this opportunity to really touch people's lives. And um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, even if we are doing business online, even if you know we have become this global economy where it's so easy to, I have clients all around the world, we're still looking for that connection. We still want to know, you know that we have that like heartfelt, uh, I'm trying to look for another word other than connection, but that heartfelt feeling, you know, where we're just, we're showing up as real and authentic, and, and especially in a world that focuses on the highlight reel, being authentic is very brave. You are going to be at the forefront of this movement that I feel like, you know, so many people are beginning to explore. All these big global brands, um, you know, I've worked with Fortune 500 companies, Eugenia, Toyota, all these things, all these brands are realizing, oh, it's the personal story and the personal narrative that's really going to connect. So I think that that's, you know, how I came about to do this now. <laughs> that is fascinating. I love the story. I love the background of the immigrants because, I mean, I definitely think that their stories are, are just so heroic and the things that they went to. I mean, we have cushy, pretty cushy lives. Yeah, definitely. So what is our first step? Yeah, that's really great. I noticed that Sheila has a question, but I can't see the rest of what she says. So oh, I got it right here. So, plus I want to um, restate the topic today. So Sheila says something that she has a question about is how to share something about her story without bringing attention to it over and over and over again. Because how can we heal if we keep identifying ourselves with the previous illness? 
say I've had depression in the past just by writing about it or bringing awareness seems to keep the energy in my field. We want to feel like we are survivors, but how can we let go of the past and talk about it in the story? And I'll, you know, Sheila, I'll speak to that first and then turn it over to Judy. Because I actually write in my book, Conscious Communications, chapter two, there's a subsection called Tell a New Story. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of tragedies in my past. For example, um, my child passed away in 1993. I have another special needs child that I've been raising for 17 years. And I also went through a very tragic divorce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are like three really tragic things that has... Um, you know, manifested in illness and all kinds of stresses in my body. But here's the thing that like, I've learned how to tell my story where I'm focusing on the parts of the story that are the triumphants. The triumph, honestly, that's the part we're getting to that is so important. The most important part of your story from what I think, like this is my perspective, the most important part of your story is in the way you empowered yourself to be able to move on. And so Judy, what, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, I would fully agree with that. I would say that um, it's the transformation, that really dynamic shift. That's what people are looking for. Because if you are looking to help people who are in that state where they are having health challenges and they're looking for for that transformation to move through. First, they're gonna to need to connect with you. So they're going to need to know that they can trust you and that you've been where they are because then it helps to alleviate a lot of the guilt, the shame, the frustration, you know, all of that. They can immediately connect with you in that way and that's really important. And then from there, really focusing on what the life looks like now. This is all part of the heroine's journey, really focusing on you know, what you've learned along the way, what that catalyst has enabled you to get to. And, you know, really, I, I always say that it's like the pain island and the pleasure islands. You know, my family, I met my husband on Kauai. Kauai was my dream location. So I have a lot of connections to the islands. But um, your pain island is where a lot of your clients probably are right now. And how can you help move them to this pleasure island? How can you help move them to where it is that they want to be residing in, in, in that energy that you're holding and embodying now? So, you know, I think that definitely what Mary said, that's, that's really key. Yeah, and I think too, Sheila, because um, you specifically asked, like, because one of the things that I say in the book is that every time you tell a story, like the tragic story from your past, you're actually recreating and you're building a strength in that neural network and you're recreating the same chemicals that were going through your body at the time that the story was created. So it, it is important that you practice this along the way with telling your story, but keeping your energy in the present, keeping your energy in the part of the story story of the gifts that you got from it, the things that you learned, and the way and the steps that you took to move on, that will help you to stay in the now and not draw yourself back into that past energy. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that question. Thank you so, so much. And then Tasha says, um, which I'm going to, Tasha has a really great question, but I want to go over step one because Tasha wants to know who were the key people who helped you hear that inner voice? But I also want to get going with the, the steps, too. So yeah. thanks for the question, Tasha, and we will get to it in just a second. Yeah. So, you know, step one is going back to the parents' journey. So the free gift that I have for all of your um, watch viewers <laughs> and uh, anybody who's watching the replay, anybody who's here right now, is this um, chakra journal. So um, I've created it, you know, whether or not you know anything about the chakras, it's totally fine. Um, it, I give you an introduction of what it is. And the reason that I associated this journal with the the chakras is because you know when you're looking at it from the roots on upwards you really have to deal with like your fundamental issues first mm -hmm. then you have to move to you know more of the esoteric and then you move towards more of the self-actualization if you guys are curious about learning more of that you know search maslow's hierarchy of needs because he talks a lot about that about like first you need to meet your base needs and then you start moving upwards um, so the heroine's journey is really giving you an opportunity to explore what were those core moments that happened in your life that really made you pivot and to approach things as to where you are now. You know, what were the learning lessons? What were the, the challenges that you overcame? And when you think about this, obviously our lives are really rich. We have a lot of different experiences. So we could go down any number of paths and write about that. But what I want you to focus on is like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Who are you able to serve? You know, um, what are you doing with your business? Because this heroin journey is, we want to get specific and focused on 
you know, who you're talking to and how that can relate. So again, like, you know, we have so many different experiences that we could draw from any number of those and easily write novellas or novels about all of those. But what's the core heroine story that you're looking to dive into right now for the purposes of, you know, whether it's your brand story or the book that you want to write. So use the journal that I created. There's a lot of prompts in there and it takes you through, you know, like the foundation family, understanding of self, and then it starts moving you more towards you know, your sense of spirituality, the sense of understanding of you know how the world is. And then I think along those journaling prompts, so much of this is just a deeper understanding of self. And when you have that, as you're writing things down, as you're moving through, you'll realize like, oh that that's probably the thing that I need to focus on. Because when I did this um, exercise with my group coaching clients, they all came back to me and said that exploring their heroine's journey really brought things that they never thought of forward and really helped cement you know what they're meant to do now and how they meant to say it. So that's step one. So Judy, I really appreciate I really appreciate this and I'm especially excited about the chakra journal because when I was writing conscious communications, um, chapter one and two really has a lot of like my backstory in it, but um, I wasn't prepared to write that. So I actually like wrote this sort of fluffy stuff and it had sort of like some business stories in it, but nothing super personal. And then after I wrote the entire book, I went back and I wrote the real deal. You know what I mean? And I wish that I would have had something like you're talking about this chakra journal because it sounds like it would have helped me get to the heart of the issue. Um, and you know, that's one of the things I love to share with people is just like some shortcuts because from what you're describing, I really feel like I wish I would have had that tool when I first started writing my book. So what is the second step in this process of making our story beautiful? Well, again, it's going to go back to who you're talking to. I think that a lot of times we're so, we're multi-passionate and we have so many different areas that we could pursue. So, you know, how do you gain clarity on who it is that you're looking to serve right now and who it is that's like really calling to your heart? Um, I think that this is, given my experience with my clients and the different industries that I work with, this is always the hardest thing is like, who is my ideal client? Who is my target market? What is so hard? Yeah, it's really hard. And I think that another reason that's so challenging is because we're taught that it's so easy to shift focus. It's so easy to, you know, I mean, if anybody does like online dating these days, like ghosting is like a really common thing. It's so easy just to not show up and to not make that commitment. Mm -hmm. And I'm challenging you to make that commitment. I'm challenging you to, you know, put a stake in the ground, to feel like who, this is who I'm standing for now. And the great thing is, is you are going to change. You are going to evolve. You've got so much more life ahead of you that it's inevitable that you will become a different person and you will attract different people to your energy as you evolve, you know? like um, So it's not like just because you make a commitment now that you can't expand upon that or you can't, you know, pivot a little bit. And the reason that I go back to the a thousand moving bands is if you can form this authentic connection people, with people, they will have this, this desire to continue to follow you and to continue to follow you for the different evolutions of your journey. But it doesn't need to be, um, if you have these superficial connections and a lot of online marketers and um, experts will tell you this too, it doesn't mean anything because in the next moment, some shiny object can come along and they'll start pursuing that. And if you can form that bond with people, with the people that you're talking to and really allow yourself to deepen those relationships, then you have something really special. And I think it's always harder to go down and go deep than to continue to spread yourself out and make that superficial, you know, approach. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. And I would caution everyone, when you're describing your audience, um, don't, a mistake, like something really weak to do is just to say, it's everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you that it is not everybody. Um, you want to you wanna dial that down a little bit. So what's the last step, Judy? Yeah, and it's the challenge, like you said, of getting to the heart of the matter. Are you being authentic? Are you willing and ready to go there? And that's why, you know, the the chakras start with the basic stuff so that you can get comfortable in that space. You can get comfortable in that foundation before you start moving on up to the deeper, hardier, heavier, or, you know, more intense kind of thing. So 
the more authentic that you're willing to be, the more compelling the story is going to be. Because people can feel that. They can feel when you're being real. They can feel when you are showing up and you're telling the truth. And, um, and also, I have to say, it's way more exhausting to be superficial than it is to be real. It's because you have to maintain this illusion, and there's just so much energy put behind that. So it's so much easier to show up in your authentic self but it is a delicate balance. So I always say, you know, like we've been talking about tragedies and um, and really big life things that have happened. You never want to make it your reader's problem. They're not there to solve it for you. Um, and I'm not saying that you have to create it in a pretty package, like, okay, so everything's all worked out now. And it's not that, it's just owning your journey. And you can bring people along as, you know, witnesses to your journey and witnesses to the unfolding of everything. But again, everyone has so much stuff to deal with. Let's not make it each other's problem. Let's own what's ours and share the lessons that we're learning along the way. So I do this a lot in my Facebook group where even if I'm going through something where I don't know what the outcome of it is going to be, I find the golden thread. I find the golden um, you know, lesson in it. Or I admit that I don't know and I own that I'm figuring out what the solution is. And you know, you might hear a lot of people online talk about a vulnerability hangover. I think that that's when you overshare it, um, when you feel like you're not quite ready to like lean in how far you've gone. So give yourself that opportunity to lean in. Maybe your heart will palpitate and your palms will sweat, but not to the point where you wake up in the morning like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, you know. Um, so find that way where you can also, going back to understanding who you are and how you want to show up in the world, you know, know what your healthy boundaries are. For me, I'm really okay with being very open and honest and sharing specific details in my life. Some other people, not so much, and that's okay. You can still pick a scene from your life and dive really deep into that scene without having to, you know, expose everyone or everything or the background of it. So, you know, I think the other part is like really checking in. And you can feel from a heartfelt space, like, is there something else that I'm hesitating on? Am I hesitating because I'm honoring myself or am I hesitating out of fear? So that's a good distinction. Yeah, so thank you so much. I want to circle back to Tasha's question. So now that we've gone through the uh, three steps, which was steps one, you want to get really clear on your hero's journey. Step two is you want to understand why connection is key. Like the connection to your audience is way more valuable than the number of followers that you have. And then step three is the willingness to be seen. So being open and vulnerable to a point where you're not making your problem other people's problems. So those are really great steps. And then Tasha said, Judy, who were the key people who helped you hear your inner voice that you had learned in your childhood? Well, let's see. You had learned in your childhood wasn't necessarily ideal from your family's belief system. Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, when I was about 17, I would say, I developed a eating disorder and it would end up plaguing me for the next 15 years of my life. And wow. yeah, it was really intense. I actually literally tried to run away from myself all around the map until I arrived in China on the other side of the world, working as an editor of an English language magazine there and realizing, oh, I've literally run as far away from myself as I possibly could and still here I am. So <laughs> being able to um, deal and grapple with that inner voice, it took me a while. Like I really tried to run from myself for a very long time until I was faced with a very real decision of, okay, I can feel my body is falling apart now. So I have a choice. I can either go back to the States and get into therapy and get the same care of, or I can stay here in what looks on the surface like a really great lifestyle and pretty much just die. I mean, it wasn't like, and it wasn't an easy decision because I didn't have a lot of self-love for myself at the time. So I didn't immediately want to book that ticket and jump back to the States. And so I did end up going back. Um, I went back to you know, the home where all of this um, chaos began. And I embarked on this journey of therapy and, you know, really went into this intensive outpatient program. I had to really deal and grapple with a lot of things that I didn't want to think about. So, you know, in my life, my grandmother was the one nurturing person who always showed up unconditionally. And she didn't speak English. We, we had a language barrier. 
I spoke a bit of Mandarin and she, you know, we tried to communicate. But her <laughs> energy was always that she was so, so loving. And when she passed, I didn't grieve her death for several years. And it was in that therapy program, in an art therapy project, where all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, all of this stuff is like finally caught up with me. So in allowing for that and allowing for this breakdown to happen, I was able to rebuild myself. And in that process of my therapy, I really pursued yoga and found a lot of spiritual understanding there that I couldn't find in anything else that I explored. So every time I was on my mat and I would bring my hands to the purpose at my heart center, it just felt like coming home. So eventually I became a yoga teacher and a yoga practitioner. And the yoga training program that I did was so spiritually based, it really helped to move forward. So there are a lot of different um, ways that I tapped into shifting that inner conversation and it was part therapy, part yoga, part being in nature a lot. I the ocean always drew me so I surfed a lot. You know, and there is nothing like getting tumbled in the waves and getting knocked down, dragged out by the ocean that were really forced you to be present. So that was it was a lot of, you know, personal discovery. I mean at the start, if you asked me what's your favorite color, I would say, I don't know. Like I knew nothing about myself until now, you know, when I have um, a family and, you know, my daughter and I'm stepping into that role of mother. So there's a lot of different changes that have happened. I don't know the question. I, that was a beautiful answer. So I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope everyone enjoyed the training today. It was really great for me. And I want to make sure that everyone grabs the free gift from Judy, which is a chakra journal. So this is going to help you create your own heroine story by going through the journal prompts. So I certainly can't wait to get mine. I'm actually going to try to do it um, this weekend if I can. And make sure you like the Mary Shores page for updates and new trainings. And we're doing as many many um, videos as we can. Today is the first day of the three-part live stream for the Aspiring Authors Online Workshop. So we're very excited because um, we're going to, for three days in a row, we're going to be online answering questions live about the Aspiring Authors Online Workshop or just about writing and publishing and promotion in general. So also we'll post a link for the Aspiring Authors online workshop if anyone's interested in that and massive love until next time massive love judy thank you so very much this has been a thrill thank you everyone have a beautiful day all right see you next time bye bye hey this is mary thanks so much for watching check out a free chapter of my book conscious communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter the link is in the description below